It is my special pleasure to be a part of uh, Texas Heart Institute uh, <clears throat> Global uh, Cardiovascular Forum celebrating 60 years of excellence at our institution. My name is Von Krasia. I'm an international cardiologist at Texas Heart Institute at CHI Health Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center in Houston. The topic of uh, my presentation is safety and effectiveness of less invasive TAVR protocol with current generation TAVR devices, single center experience. I have no disclosures related to this presentation. Now, uh, the first TAVR was performed two decades ago by uh, Dr. Cribier in Rouen, France in 2002. Significant progress has been uh, made in the last uh, two decades uh, as far as TAVR is concerned, and current generation TAVR devices are associated with higher success rate and fewer complications than early generation devices. TAVR technology continues to drive towards less invasive solutions. I would like to share with you the information from um, the uh, report from 2020 on uh, the situation and status of uh, TAVR uh, in the United States uh, related to um, the experience that was uh, collected in STS uh, registry database. As we can see here on the left-hand side, we can see that uh, TAVR is uh, exponentially growing over the last um, decade or so. At the present time, uh, uh, more than uh, 79,000 procedures are being performed in the United States. On the right-hand side, we can see that there is also rapidly increasing number of uh, sites that are performing tower in the United States. Also, what we can see that uh, in addition to uh, the rapid growth and expansion of uh, uh, tower, as we can see, to a 72 1,991 patients in 2019, that um, uh, we can see that the number of SAVRs or surgical procedures are slowly declining, and this is obviously related to the popularity of TAVR. The important thing is that the TAVR mortality is uh, rapidly decreasing as far as 30-day uh, mortality and also one-year mortality uh, uh, as shown here, and currently uh, the mortality at um, uh, one year, uh, hospital mortality is close to 1%, and uh, as far as 30-day uh, mortality is 2.3%, which is dramatically lower than in 2012 when it was significantly higher. As far as tower mortality is concerned for all patients, high and prohibitive risk patients and intermediate risk patients as well as low risk patients, we can see progressive decrease in mortality. This is uh, particularly true for, uh, uh, as we can see, low risk patients where the in-hospital mortality is 0.5% and 30-day mortality is 0.8%, but it's also true for other subgroup of patients as well. As far as median length of stay in the hospital is concerned, we can see that for uh, low-risk patients, it's uh, one day, and uh, for uh, intermediate and high-risk patients, is uh, two days, which is, again, dramatically lower than, let's say, 10 years ago. Now, as far as discharge disposition is concerned, we can also see significant changes that have occurred in the last decade, where uh, the great majority of patients, uh, more than 90% are discharged to home, and a significantly uh, smaller number of patients uh, need extended care and rehabilitation or nursing home, as we can see on the bottom uh, image of this uh, slide. The great majority of patients, 96% uh, at the present time, uh, are performed by a femoral approach. And this is due to progress as far as technology is concerned and uh, the use of lower profile devices that can accommodate even uh, smaller femoral arteries and more diseased femoral arteries. 
So what are the opportunities to demonstrate the benefits of less invasive tower? Now, as far as less invasive tower is concerned, it's also called uh, the least invasive tower, or minimalist tower, or fast track tower. I would like to use the term of less invasive tower because as the technology uh, progresses and we gain more expertise uh, in the treatment of this condition, we will see even further progress. Number one uh, important aspect is to improve patient satisfaction. The second important aspect is to improve efficiency and also to reduce hospital expenditures. And how can we achieve that? We can achieve it by performing TAVR in a cardiac cath lab, which is less uh, costly than the operating room, by using conscious sedation or MAC, and also percutaneous approach for femoral artery access. And it's also important that post-procedural monitoring should be done in less uh, costly environment, such as telemetry floor, rather than costly ICU or recovery room, and our goal is to reduce the length of stay to 24 hours. Now there is ample evidence in literature that to achieve this goal we should be able to demonstrate with less invasive tower protocol 30-day death and stroke of less than 3% and 30-day um, uh, readmission to less than 10% and the need for 30-day pacemaker rate also to less than 10% and uh, uh, greater than mild uh, perivalvular uh, leak of less than 4%. Now at our institution, we uh, wanted to evaluate our experience with less invasive uh, tower. And this study was initiated to evaluate the effectiveness of this approach uh, in patient population that satisfied the accepted Sapien XT, uh, Sapien 3, Evolute R and Evolute Pro tower inclusion and, and exclusion criteria. Our, what we call Texas Heart Institute, less invasive tower study is a retrospective and non randomized single center study that was performed by seven uh, Texas Heart Institute operators that are listed uh, here. All procedures were performed uh, at our uh, cardiac uh, cath labs at our institution. The study period was from November 2015 to December 2021. The less invasive type uh, protocol uh, was considered as procedure that were performed with conscious sedation or MAC, local anesthesia, and again, percutaneous approach and repair using current generation femoral artery closure devices. As we can see here, as far as our Tower protocol is concerned, it's important to take into consideration all the aspects uh, pre-procedure, which is screening, uh, which we call a plan for success. Uh, the patient should be evaluated whether they're suitable for tower, whether they satisfy criteria for femoral artery access and closure with current generation closure devices, whether they are suitable and willing to undergo a local anesthesia or a MAC, and conscious sedation, and uh, obviously we wanted to exclude patients with anatomic contra uh, indications and patients that had a serious comorbid conditions that would require prolonged hospitalization. During the hospitalization and during the procedure, uh, our goal is to minimize complications uh, by performing the procedure in cardiac cath lab to reduce the cost. Uh, and also to be able to perform transfemoral TAVR via percutaneous approach and uh, uh, no Foley, no NG tube, no radial line or no central line and no uh, T, uh, T, uh, TEE would be performed. Therefore, the procedures were performed by transthoracic echo. Post-procedure, our goal is also to minimize uh, the length of hospital stay the use of a standard approach uh, as far as medications are concerned with clopidogrel and aspirin transfer to a regular interventional floor rather than ICU or recovery room and encourage the patient for early ambulation and the diet. And uh, our goal is always to discharge the patient within 24 hours of the procedure. Here we can see as far as devices are 
were used in this study. It was Sapien XT, Sapien 3, and Evolute R and Pro. As we can see, the great majority of procedures were performed by Sapien valves, Sapien XT and Sapien 3, and uh, <clears throat> roughly uh, uh, 12 to 13% uh, were performed by Evolute R and Evolute Pro. We divided the patients in two groups to evaluate the safety and effectiveness of a less invasive protocol. As we can see, there were 593 patients included in the percutaneous approach and general anesthesia, and 561 patients in less invasive TAVR protocol, which used the MAC or a conscious sedation. As we can see, there were no significant differences in those groups because this was propensity matched uh, groups that were included in this study. As we can also see, uh, uh, a small number of patients, uh, 0 0.3 in the percutaneous and general anesthesia group, and 0.5% in less invasive TAVR group were uh, valve in valve procedures. Now, as far as uh, other patient characteristics are concerned, we can see uh, that again, there was no difference between two groups as far as uh, gender is concerned, or mean age is concerned, or STS score is concerned. Other patient characteristics, again, are listed here for two groups. And as we can see, there were no significant differences as far as incidence of coronary disease, uh, previous bypass surgery, previous intervention, previous AVR, uh, ejection fraction, and many other parameters are concerned. As far as procedural outcomes are concerned between two groups, we can see significant uh, differences uh, as far as total procedure time, uh, total room time, uh, need to transfer to telemetry, and uh, need to transfer to ICU, which was dramatically lower in the group with less invasive TAVR protocol. As far as the procedural concern, uh, success is concerned, there was no difference between two groups and the procedural success was 100%. As far as uh, procedural and post-procedural complications are concerned, uh, <coughs> the need for conversion to general anesthesia in less invasive TAVR was only 1.2%. The hospital mortality was not different. Uh, the hospital mortality was significantly lower, as we can see, uh, for less invasive TAVR, which was zero, and 10% uh, uh, for percutaneous TAVR and general anesthesia. And as far as uh, other parameters are concerned, as far as CVA, vascular complications, and the need for a new pacemaker, there was no significant difference. Also, when we look at the post-procedural outcomes, as far as the length of a stay, it was significantly shorter for less invasive TAVR. Uh, home post-op day one was again more common in less invasive TAVR, and there were no other significant differences as far as disposition to home, the need for transfer to rehab floor or, unity, or unit or transfer to a SNF, or readmission at 30 days or mortality at 30 days is concerned. Now, I wanted to share with you some of the information as far as our results are concerned and compare it with previously published data. One of the most recent uh, studies uh, that looked at the aspect of uh, minimalist TAVR or fast track TAVR or less invasive TAVR is so-called 3M study that included uh, 14 leading institutions in North America. 441 patients were included in this study, and this was published by Dr. Wood and Associates in uh, Jack uh, Cardiovascular Intervention in 2019. Now, one of their uh, uh, goals was to be able to see how many patients can be discharged uh, 24 hours uh, from uh, the day of the procedure. Now, when we look at the uh, uh, parameters of importance uh, with our less invasive TAVR and 3M, we can see there was no significant difference as far as SDS score is concerned, no significant difference in uh, age, and uh, <coughs> no significant difference as far as length of stay is concerned. You have to remember that there are criteria 
for a successful study was one day hospital stay. So the other patients that had to stay longer were excluded from this study. As far as 30 day mortality is concerned, uh, we had a slightly lower mortality of 0.9% in our study versus 1.5% in 3M study. And as far as 30 day stroke rate is concerned, there is no significant difference. Uh, as far as 30-day uh, readmission, again, no significant difference. And the need for a pacemaker 30-day, again, there was no significant difference with slightly higher numbers uh, in our study is concerned. Now, there is also a huge sts TVT registry. Some of the information I shared with you previously where uh, almost 73,000 patients were included and the data was uh, published in 2020. And we can see as far as uh, all the parameters are concerned that uh, our results uh, fare better related to 30-day mortality uh, and uh, also stroke rate uh, as well as um, other parameters, particularly as far as 30-day need for permanent pacemaker is concerned. So in conclusion, we can say that less invasive TAVR can be performed safely and effectively in properly equipped cardiac cath lab using consternation or MAC and local anesthesia and femoral artery percutaneous approach. Uncomplicated patients uh, with aortic stenosis post TAVR remain stable and ICU can be eliminated for most patients uh, post TAVR. And there is a low incidence of bleeding events as uh, reported in numerous studies, and also low incidence of neurological events. And it is safe to monitor patients in a step-down unit after TAVR. In addition to that, overall length of stay can be reduced uh, in, with this approach, and significant cost savings can be anticipated with less invasive TAVR. However, this procedure should be only performed by an experienced team and our Texas Heart Institute um, fast track study or less invasive study is a retrospective non-randomized uh, single center study that um, uh, obviously needs to be validated in the larger population of patients uh, in a randomized uh, controlled study. Thank you very much for your attention.